Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little, and I'm here today with the sixth week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where I go over one of my hands, or someone else's hand, and I critique the play of both the of both myself and the pl other player in the hand. I will do my best to do that today in this episode. So right here, this is from a $10,000 buy-in tournament at Bellagio. This is actually a live poker tournament, not an online tour tournament. And this is like ultimately the goal of every poker player, or every tournament player, is to be able to play these large buy-in tournaments and have a chance to get on TV and win a million dollars. And you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to have that opportunity. And if you want to learn how to do this for basically nothing, I definitely suggest you check out my uh, my poker book, which is Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker, and also my training site, FloatTheTurn.com, where I put up uh, videos of myself and also other professional poker players every month where we all play online and sometimes some live hands and also each month I do a live webinar where you can get online and talk to me for about an hour along with a few other of my members of the site and we can discuss hands or poker questions or whatever you want to talk about so for only eight dollars a month you can get that which is basically a steal seeing that all other poker training sites out currently really completely lack in multi-table tournament coaching and also they're a lot more expensive so I'm trying to do something to get back to the poker community, and if you would like to check that out, go check it out at floatthetern.com. Anyways, this is a $10,000 tournament, and this player right here, which we're going to call Kid, because he is a young kid, has been playing very aggressively so far. The names of these players are incorrect. These are not uh, online players. These, The players to my left, actually the three or four players to my left, are all fairly tight, older players that I really want to be able to relieve of their blinds. And if this kid here it raises a lot every time they fold to him, it's going to make it very difficult on me to be able to steal blinds. So what I have to do is I have to slow the kid down. And I usually give the kid an orbit or two and some dirty looks to say, hey, slow down, you're, you're stealing my blinds, as in you're stealing the blinds that I want to steal. And this kid just would not slow down. So we have to do something about it. He makes a 2200 at 400, 800, and I re raise to 6500 with 8 5 offsuit, which I think is pretty standard. Um, not, I mean, I guess obviously it's way out of line, but it's sort of a standard play. And the kid calls, which is not really what I want to see. We get a Jack 9 7 rainbow flop, and the kid checks to me, and I like to bet 13, or I bet, I bet 6800 into the 13,200 pot. And I think this is a fairly normal play. I don't really see any other option here. Um, checking back doesn't really accomplish much because I have 8 high. Whenever you have like nut low cards, you really want to be betting. Here we do have a double gut shot, though, so I certainly am not going to get away from the hand if he does decide to check raise, which is exactly what he does. He makes it 18,000. So right here, I'm getting 3.4 to 1. And I'm going to peel my card about one in four times. So assuming he puts like another penny in the pot, it'll be at least break even. And whenever someone check raises the flop, you can generally expect him to continue putting money in the pot. So to peel the card on the turn, I think it's very profitable to call. And sometimes if your opponent um, checks the turn, you could get a free river card and then perhaps get paid off there as well, which is fantastic. So I'm paying for like one and a half cards effectively. Uh, so I like a call here. I don't really like a raise because this board is very good for his calling range, his preflop calling range, and very bad for my preflop three betting range. Unless he thinks I'm three betting very wide. And really, I, I have been fairly tight so far in this tournament because he'd been raising every hand. So there's really no reason for him to think that I have air here. So if I if I like shove here, I'm going to... I'm probably going to get called by hands that just have me and also monsters in very, in very bad shape. So I could get him off his bluffs, but I think we're probably better off just calling here. The turn's an ace, and he checks, which is great, because now I can get to see a free river. Um, I don't really plan on bluffing here. I think if I bluff the turn, I have to shove the river. So here if I on the turn, if I bet like 25k, and he shoves, I sort of wrote myself into a pretty bad spot because I have to put in 40k to win 140k which is almost break even so I don't really want to bet 25k here I don't want to bet like 15k here because that just looks absurd um, I don't want to go all in here because if he has any sort of hand he'll probably find a hero call seeing that he is a young aggressive kid so really my options are pretty limited here so 
I like to check it back, and I think this is pretty standard. We river the 10, and that is a good card for me. He checks, so I go ahead and bet. One interesting thing on the flop is whenever a guy check raises you on the flop, you should always think about his range. And on the flop, his range certainly does contain king-queen. However, if he does have king-queen, I think he would probably bluff the, the turn because he's sitting there with very little showdown value. So, on the river, when he checks, I think it's just totally unlikely as king-queen. So, for all practical purposes, I have the nuts with just the naked ace, the naked eight. He checks, and I bet 35000 And I actually hate my bet looking back. Right here, I think I'd be much better off either making a large bet of, like, 48000 or a small bet of, like, 21000 And... I think the small bet right here is by far the best play. And that's mainly because he's shown a lot of weakness by checking both the turn and the river here. So I don't think he has a monster. And also, I would love for him to call and for me to be able to show the 8-5 offsuit to him and the whole table to say, hey, don't mess with me, because I'm going to be playing back at you. So when I bet 35000 I think I'm going to get called by basically the same range that, as if I was to bet 48000 So that makes 48000 instantly better than 35000 However... I think 21000 right here would be the best bet. And in this hand, he does fold, and unfortunately, I win a nice pot. So, not a bad result to win a pretty large pot here with A5 and hopefully slow the kid down, but it's not really the result you hope for. So, check out part two of this, where I will discuss my opponent's hand and his range. Honestly, I don't know what he had, but we will still go through here and discuss what I think he had. And also, next week... I will be going over one more hand where we actually play another lo very large pot with this player one orbit later in this $10,000 buy-in tournament. So this has been Jonathan Little for Weekly Poker Hand. Thanks for watching.